So the U.S. Central Bank, or what you call the U.S. Fed, that's how it's called, has decided to leave interest rate unchanged for the final time in 2019. We're not sure if there's going to be any rate cuts next year. So this is kind of wrapping it up for central bankers around the world. But today is a big day for the ECB. Christine Lagarde, fresh in from the IMF, now the president of the ECB in Brussels, will hold the first meeting and the final meeting of the year. There's a press briefing, 1.45 p.m., local time. You don't want to miss that. How does all this flow into our marketplace? We always bring all this home. And bringing it home today is uh, Timito Kulugule, a uh, member of the economic think tank and a research analyst at Financial Derivatives. Despite all of this, good morning. I'm sure we have our own headaches to deal with locally. Yes, we do. Yes, we so, do. But, but let's start from the global space. Okay. Um, What's your take on all of this, looking at it, how outlining that or highlighting it as one of the burning economic issues for the day? Okay. So um, the U.S. Fed held its last meeting of the year, 2019, day before yesterday and yesterday. And at the end of the meeting, they agreed to maintain a status quo. They agreed to leave rates unchanged. So the rate is still between 1.5 to 1.75 percent. And, you know, the forward guidance is was important. The forward guidance for 2020 was that rates would remain unchanged, largely unchanged, and, you know, they would take a back seat during the election year 2020. And so, you know, what that means for Nigeria is that one, so going into 2020, uh, the fears is that what happens to our Naira in 2020. So one of the key factors, one of the factors that could lead to a weakness in our Naira is the U.S. Fed and its decision. So, you know, giving us a forward guidance that things will remain unchanged, it removes one threat of a Naira weakness in that people, investors will not, you know, take their money to the U.S. because of higher interest rates. So that removes one factor of a, you know, of a Naira weakness in 2020. But there are other factors, bear in mind, you know, there are still the factors of, you know, the sentiment and the perceived, you know, political... No, policy risks in 2020. Mm. So that those factors still weigh in. And, you know, we and another burning issue is Brent. Brent is currently at about $64 per barrel. And then we also have that, you know, um, there's a, there are hints, there are talks of, you know, the CBN likely to raise um, LDR again in 2020 to 70%. And, you know, one key issue for many Nigerians yesterday and today is, you know, the strike by the power sector, you know, power sector workers. And but even though as of this morning they have been, they have suspended the strike. But you know that that was a down night last night with you know the mm. total blackness across the federation, and that just shows us that. May I inform you? Mm. May I cut in mm -hmm. respectfully that we've been out of power mm. in my particular area. This half we're entering into the 14th month. So I wasn't even aware there was a national blackout yesterday. Yeah, but just go on. Yeah. I just want to put that on record. <laughs> that whether they go on strike or not. I mean, some, some parts of the states don't women, even know. Women, 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 women out of Powerful. national grid mm. uh, for about for 13th to enter into 14th month. Yeah. So, so mm. this is one big story. But we'll yes. get to that in a short while. So let's just go to the, the downers. Uh, mm. no, before that, I look at the inflation forecast. That's yes. very important. Inflation How do I want forecast. to miss that? Because I want to put all, some of the other issues into that basket. Mm. Then we'll get to electricity. electricity inflation, okay. you folks yes. at the FDC are looking at 11.88. Yes, for November. So inflation, November figures are scheduled to come out next week, Tuesday. And, you know, we're projecting a 11 point, an increase to 11.88%. We're coming from 116 Six. Six one, yes. yes. And you know, it, the thing is, if you look through the last decade, inflation increasing in November is nothing new because festive demand, festive mm. season, mm. there's that seasonality is nothing new. But the, the one, obviously, everybody knows the impact of the border closure on, you know, in, um, commodity prices. But there's one factor that is, is not really being talked about is the factor of, you know, the decline in interest rates and what that means for the incentive to save. So yesterday at the primary market auction, we saw that 91-day bills, 91-day T-bills is as low as 5%. So there's no incentive incentive for me to want to save. There's no... So, and obviously, economic theory says that if your marginal propensity to save declines, that may just mean that you just consume. It's, a, either, sky, it's a sky fall. You know, so you either consume or you save this? what Folks who just went on frenzy yesterday on social know, media, on Twitter. Know, yes, 5%. 5%? Really Hold on a second. Where is Central Bank going? going Ground exactly, zero. Exactly. I have where no really idea going. what the MFLA is doing, we, we, but it looks like they're ready mm. to take the yield curve on treasury bills 
to ground zero. We're all the way down. And, you know, interest rates are 5%. I mean, what's, what really... How do you pair that how with do inflation? You pay, exactly. So the thing is, if there's no incentive to save, you consume. Because two things happen with your income. You either save or you consume it. And if I'm looking at T-bills rate at 5%, why would I... Why, why We're coming from mm. 14 15%. There's no incentive for me to want to save. And already you've, you've um, restricted me from the OMO market, mm. the T-bills market that I can play in. I'm seeing yields of 5%. I would just want to consume what I can. Which, I mean, which goes consume, back to the issue that the inflation. government wants to rebalance its mm. debt portfolio mm. and now wants to do more of foreign borrowing. Foreign you won't be paying 20% at home on treasury bills mm. and you're paying 7 8% on euro bond outside. Mm. Yeah. You add that together, foreign or local, you're dead in the middle. Mm. You're dead in the water, as yeah. the saying goes. Go Great. So let's talk about electricity. Okay. Where are we? Those folks say they're no longer going on strike, mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. state of the electricity uh, it's, is not anything is, yes. so switched to right home about right now. Where okay. are we as far as the grid constraints is? Okay, so let's just... Um like no water before, constraint. There's but no water constraint. Like we said before, there's um they, they were on strike yesterday. We saw that there was a national blackout last night, and you know, to, as of this morning, they've called off the strike. But I think that one key thing is when things like this happen, it just shows you, and it's not a coincidence that at the same time when. Um, the union workers went on strike is when mm. there was a grid collapse. I, I highly doubt that that's a coincidence. So that just shows you that when events like this happens, it shows you, it reveals more fundamental issues to deal with. And if you pair that with what South Africa is also going through with the ESCOM, it just, it shows that, you know, there's, there's debt overhang in both of these countries. There's mismanagement, you know, in both of these countries. And so, and the the power output for yesterday, we've not yet gotten that data, but as at the day before 9th of December, we saw that power was above 4,000 megawatts, but I, I highly doubt that we'll be above 4,000 as at yesterday. We haven't gotten that figure yet, mm. but we are likely to see a crash in power output for yesterday. Okay, so, so, so if we take a final look, one minute or mm -hmm. so, Let's track the global oil market okay. uh, quickly. Where are we as far as oil prices is concerned? Okay, so currently we are at $64 per barrel and Six, $64. Oh, great. Per uh, okay, Aramco, thank you, Saudi Aramco. Yeah, yeah, a very a, big splash. A very they big. Crossed the $2 trillion listing, this morning. In fact, the largest, his, largest listing by any company in history. So that is, is, that is good news yeah, for us. Yeah, and raised that stock know? market uh, mm. rate level to the seventh so, largest in the world. Yes, yeah, so that definitely. One yeah. single, I'm just thinking if we list an NPC. <laughs> Right. Perhaps we you could know, just with beat the, the GSE. Of, with the listing of Aramco, everybody just comes <laughs> to wonder, NMPC, you know, are we, are we going to can we follow just do, in can line we just do with it? Aramco? But I think we're still a way off from following in line with Aramco. Don't I, be I too sure. Say, I just don't know what Mr. President <laughs> is up to. He wakes <laughs> up one morning, he's doing something, <laughs> and the next day right. he's doing that. But again, you mm. can't be too sure, because it looks like uh, this sure president if, is... Uh, mm. uh, is uh, going in directions that is, people are unclear about. It's very difficult to predict where President Buhari is going. So you just be surprised policy. to wake up and say, he has ordered an NPC to head straight to Custom Street, talk to I mean. Stock Exchange, and get listed within 30 days. I mean, and then all of us are like, oh, where are we? <laughs> so just keep some money ready, just in case that happens. I have no idea whether an NPC will be listed. But <laughs> perhaps, I. I'm, I'm sure, uh, yeah. if there's anyone who has... Um, some fire in him to get it done. I think President Buhari is the one. Maybe that'll just be a game changer. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you so much.